Hello, this is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different analytics and data science topics. Today, I'm going to be talking about a commercial platform called Statistica, but I also cover general topics as well as open source. Um, this time, we're going to get back to basics. I'm going to be talking about descriptive statistics and correlations. So uh, let me show you something real quick within Statistica. If you want to replicate the view that I have, if you go into this option tabs, this is where you can set your different settings. And as far as output manager, I'm creating a single workbook uh, common for all analysis and uh, graphs. So just to let you know. So I'm going to use an example that is included within the platform. So open examples and then data sets and I'm going to use the Fisher, Fisher Iris data, so irisdat.sta. And if we look at this, we've got five columns, uh, four variables are continuous, and then one is categorical, a, a different data, the actual type of flower. Um, and then again, this is a very famous data set. But again, we're going to cover just a couple of really simple things within Statistica, and it's right here under the basic statistics. So you go to tab statistics and then basic statistics, and we're gonna be talking about these first two options, descriptive statistics and correlation matrices. So I'll click on descriptive statistics, and let me select some variables. Again, these first four are continuous. So let me just see what um, some averages uh, might look like. So on the quick tab, if I just do summary statistics, and this is normally the default, um, I get the these default uh, summary statistics or descriptive statistics, right? The number of cases or observations, the mean or average, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the standard deviation. Um, if you want to hit control R, it's a shortcut to shortcut to bring up this dialog or I can click on it on the bottom right if you see my uh, pointer. Uh, so you can also use this advanced tab to add statistics to this. So if, for example, I tend to like the median, I tend to like at least the 10th and the 90th percentile. So I'm not seeing just the ends and with the minimum and the maximum. I'm actually seeing kind of the the tails of the distribution. Um, sometimes I like to add the coefficient of variation. Anyway, you can select any of these that you want, and then you can select summary, and I just added those into the mix um, with my statistics. Also, if you bring this panel back up, under the quick tab, uh, there's some common graphics that you could use. Let's look at this uh, summary. This is the, the graph one type. Let me show you how I got there. So I just clicked on this graphs one. And um, that that brought up my uh, uh, this for all four variables. So tails are kind of heavy here. The um, uh, for this particular variable, this is the sepal length and uh, so the null here for the Komogomorov Smirnoff little force test is the null is that it's that it is normal. KS statistics is actually 0 0.08 little force is 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 small um, less than 0 0.01 um, so probably re reject well should have as a statistician should have set my alpha level or what level I was would uh, reject at beforehand. Um, let me just say that under the sepal width, it's a little more indicative. I can see here that um, I've got some right skewness. I've got a tail on the right. Um, the uh, uh, KS statistic. 0.1 and the, the little fours uh, is 0 0.01. And I thought in here, I actually had a, uh, a skewness coefficient. 
as well, uh, but maybe not underneath this underneath this this particular view. Um, I think I've collapsed my basic statistics panel, so let me just bring that that back up and let's select just a couple of variables at this point and let me show you some robust statistics that you can calculate as well so under the robust i can do a trim mean so trimming the tails off five percent and i can do a windsorized uh, mean as well so the trim mean i'm cutting the completely the tails off um, both tails five percent of the bottom five percent of the upper Windsorized means I'm bringing all of the values that extend beyond the fifth percentile and the 95th percentile, and I'm bringing it to that bound. So anything less than five percentile, I'll bring it up to the fifth percentile value. Um, anything above 95 percent, I'll actually um, make that value equal to the 95th percentile, and so I don't lose um, that information. I'm just uh, again cutting off or are moving the extreme values in that Windsorized uh, format. I can do all kinds of things with normality, other plots. I can do uh, probability and scatter plots, um, categor uh, categorical plots. Um, I should say categorized plots. We're, we're actually doing numeric data um, and looking at the, the values of the different categories. and here in just a little bit, we're going to, in the next one, we're going to talk about t-test and some other things that we can do where we actually compare uh, values in hypothesis test. So let me just go back to this robust and, and show you the statistics there for these. So the mean and trend mean, there's really not much difference. The Windsorized mean, really not a huge difference either. So not really heavy, heavy tails um, or outliers affecting the averages um, here in this. In so the other thing that we can look at under the basic statistics, um, I'm going to start a new analysis and I'm going to go to the correlation um, matrices and I can use things as a as a one variable list or a rectangular matrix. Let's just use the one variable list for these four um, variables. And so the first thing that I can do is I can just look at the, the correlations themselves. And so anything that's in red is statistically significant at 0 0.05. So um, an alpha of 0 0.05, and I can see that uh, pedal length is statistically significant with a uh, sepal length. Um, and the correlation, this is Pearson's product uh, correlation, and that's going to be 87% um, for the product correlation. Also, the pedal width is statistically significant with the sepal length, um, et cetera. Then we've got some inverse uh, relationships, negative correlation here in these two, um, and then a very high positive correlation between the pedal length and the, the pedal width here as well. And then I can also look at the the, the graphs um, of this, and I can look at each each individual graph, and I can do a so um, that's not that's not as interesting to me. These 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 uh, these uh, covariate relationships, right? Bivariate relationships uh, between each each pair is is what we're getting here but i'm probably what i tend to use is i tend to pull up use a scatter plot matrix for selected variables so let me um let me do that and there's one way to do this so this gives when i'm looking at uh, the different correlations here, I can see sepal length with itself, of course, is perfectly correlated. And then there's some other views. Let me, for a better view, uh, 
do that with this, and then I'll get the 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 views for every single one. So I can look at some interesting relationships here. You know, I've got this. There there might be something discriminating between these two groups here. This is sepal width, and this is petal length. And it seems like I've got one blob here and one blob there, uh, which might be pretty interesting to uh, investigate. And we can certainly do that in a future video. Um, but there was one other thing that I wanted to show. Oh, and it's um, a color map as well. So this is the last graphic that we'll look at. And what this provides is a kind of a heat map of correlations, right? So things that are very positively correlated are more blue. And here's the, the actual um, um, display, color display for the different ones. So really dark blue being a, a positive correlation of one, negative uh, uh, correlation is, is red. And so that gives me a quick view as well. So I want to keep this short. So I'll end there. And next time we'll pick it up. Um, uh, we'll we'll continue on with this basic statistics, but we'll talk about some different uh, tests that we can run in Statistica.